Okay, so basically, last week we have demonstrated our mega world at the very beginning, and today we are going to talk about other uh, educational gain that we have uh, in our research. So basically, we we are going to talk the first six. Actually, we already did, uh, have some demonstrations for the uh, mega world 2.0. And uh, we are going to talk about the other five uh, educational games. And also the green one, the green ones are also our educational games, but uh, that is a mobile educational games. So we are going to talk about them in the uh, mobile learning lecture. So we will have uh, talk about trading card game as the educational reward system and uh, also Pecunia, that is uh, open scene based uh, uh, life simulation game and uh, orbital physics connected kin kin game is a, a kind of physics game which tell no that tell which we wanted to make sure that the students prior knowledge can affect their performance in the game and also browser games for autistic children that is uh, also our um, priority and then make a word uh, uh, 1.0 before we start, uh, first of all, I would like to let you know that uh, when you develop uh, an educational game, you need to consider some something, some criteria. Like, uh, for, for example, first of all, are your games uh, for specific domains, or your game can uh, be used in every domains? So, uh, in this case, the knowledge domain, as you can see. Uh, the independent domain, which means our trading card game as educational reward system can be used in any subject, any topic, any classroom, as long as teachers want to use. And then National Palace Museum, that is also in the independent, domain independent again. Why? Because inside the museum, that is more than one discipline, that is a multiple discipline area. So you, your games need to cover everything. And the contest aware mobile role playing game is the same situation because you use your mobile phone, which means we don't know where you are and we don't know where you are going. So uh, the domain needed to be independent. And the uh, mega world, as you can see, we can have a mega world for English teaching, we can have a mega world for programming teaching, and we can have a mega world even to discuss uh, your APS. So that is a domain independent. For the domain dependent, like Pecunia, Pecunia is a game which we design and develop specifically for financial education, which means we want to teach students finance uh, concepts. So that is a, a domain dependent uh, game. Orbital uh, physics kinetic game, as you can see, tell from its name, that is physics. And uh, uh, autis autistic children, actually autistic children, they have uh, many different uh, um, situation need us to uh, take care but uh, in this game we focus on how to teach them uh, activity of daily living so how to dress how to help mothers to uh, you know clean the kitchen and something like that so that is a daily life uh, situation and uh, another one is practice practice is a mobile game which focus on teach student uh, math and science so practice is a commercial uh, mobile game um, actually you don't need to pay at this moment because the company uh, was started uh, two years ago and uh, and uh, they they didn't charge anything until um, at, i would say at this moment they, they still don't charge anything and uh, the company was owned by a female uh, CEO, why I say that because the CEO is the top 10 women in Canada. So, uh, so practice uh, was owned by, by her and, uh, and she is a teacher. She is a math teacher in high school and at the end uh, she thinks no, 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 the, 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 the high schoolers, uh, you know, teaching math is totally wrong. So she wants to create a, a firm and create a game which she supposed to use this game for children to practice every day. So we have a collaboration with them and uh, that is why we created the reward points calculation uh, for their app. And we will talk, talk about this in mobile learning part. 
and the Mega World game for assessment. In Mega Mega World version 1.0, we use this to assess students' Java programming language skill. So, uh, so basically, that is a domain dependent educational game. Second, you need to consider yeah. Yes. Yeah. In the game. Yes. Yeah, that is that is a very big question. But uh, okay, since she starts, so let me show you a video. Okay, uh, the video is called "Online Java Judge." That is also developed by our team. And uh, in this video, you can see that. Uh, oh yes, I have. Ah, twenty-four. So in this video, you can see that uh, uh, we have a system which can provide the teachers to create uh, uh, some kind of a programming uh, task or programming exercise, and uh, with some kind of input and output, uh, just like uh, what uh, you attend in SEM programming contest, uh, some 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 events like that. So when students attend those kind of contests, they will form a group of three three people or four people and they will need to develop uh, programs that uh, about five programs uh, with one computer so you have you have four people and you need to develop at least five programs with one computer what can you do one is probably um, working on the computer the other three working on the other program and uh, on the paper and then when it's term when when she wants to debug she probably can uh, go to check uh, on, the, on his her paper and the other three can you know take a, their turn to the computer and enter the program at the end when you think your program is good enough because uh, the contest always has a possible input and the possible output so you need to use the possible input and output to test your program to see if your program can work and of course you also need to consider some other situations because the judge will use other inputs to test your program. So once you think your program is okay, then you can submit your program. When you submit your program, judge actually, that is software, the judge will use some kind of input set to test your program and use output set to see if your output are expected. So if if uh, the judge, the online judge, think uh, no, your program doesn't match, doesn't fit our goal, then your program will be returned. So after three hours or four hours later, um, the team who have most, uh, um, you know, programs finished and uh, and uh, passed the online judge's assessment will win the game, win not again, win win the, the contest. So this is very difficult because you only have one computer and you have four people, you have so many questions, not so many, three or five, five questions, and you need to make sure that everyone work on one pro program and then write and within that four hours. So we create an online judge by ourselves. Why? That is why we want to create the online judge because we want to make sure that when students type or input the program in Mega World, the program can be automatically test and can be automatically evaluated behind the scenes, just like auto marking, marking the show answer. We wanted to use online judge to mark the uh, the program. So this one is also um, a kind of independent system as well as a service. So so you can install this Java Online Judge in your Debian system and then you can send uh, uh, your uh, expected input, expected output, and the test input, the test output, and also students' program to the system. And the system will let you know uh, what happened. So let's take a look at this. Uh, oh, the video is a little bit long, but uh, let me... Uh, Hi, my name is Tasha. 
Okay, this guy is introduced himself. We don't need to hear. He is uh, my, one of my students. And uh, as you can see, in Asabasa University, as I mentioned, that uh, most of the students are older than me. And, uh, okay, our average, average uh, age in, for graduated students are 39 years old. Master degree. So 39 years old is our average age in, uh, for the master students. And this guy, he got a job after he, he finished uh, this project. This is a graduation project. And uh, he got a job in uh, like, a, like something like a national security in, in United States, but in Canada. So, so as you can see, whether he dressed uh, not like a student, yeah? But uh, we don't need to. Uh, no. no. Staff, scoring rubric is uh, scalable. It's very interesting. Okay. So, yeah. so we start from this. That is the Java Online Judge. And uh, in this uh, interface, you can see a rubric. So we have a rubric to test uh, uh, your, your performance of your program. And go ahead and register. Now, the registration page is Jack I don't think you need to to see the uh, right. registration. Any one field using field using Ajax to uh, check. I have forgotten my username. I'm sorry. Uh, Ajax is Ajax Ajax. As a login user, um, I really have only two options. The first option is my, the performance of my uh, attempts. I haven't uh, submitted any attempts or any solutions to the Java problems, so there's not a list there. And the next option is that you start a new problem or continue a problem that I've ever saved. So I'll go ahead and start a new problem. So this problem that has randomly been given to you in the system is square integer. Um, and given an integer, it's how to display a square. I don't have time to go through and name a perfect uh, attempt. So I will go ahead and cause an error. And what will happen now is when I submit this, it will submit this uh, this solution to the Java judge. The Java judge will try to file it, and I'm pretty sure it will have compiling errors. So now that I've submitted it, I can see that it's been submitted. I can click here to refresh the page. Um, it doesn't take very long for the Java judge to do work, normally less than a second. But when a user submits their attempt, it's uh, forked. Um, PHP uh, effort that you know, goes off and uh, submits the code. So if I click on the uh, square mixture, the attempt I've made, I can see the details of this attempt. So here the you can see errors. First time I tried to, to solve this particular problem, I spent 39 seconds um, trying to solve it. I got a rubric score of zero. Um, it without Without being able to compile my code and compare it, no rubric score can be uh, created, obviously. And I can see here at the bottom my compiled errors. I can see the details of the compiled error. And if I, if I want, I can see my actual submitted code here as well. Now, my options here, I can, I can view my performance, I can uh, start a new problem, or I can go back here and I can retry this one. So I'm going to retry this. And now what I'm going to do <coughs> is I'm going to go ahead and call it an infinite loop. Um, the Java system is, uh, it has self-protection. It tests for infinite loops or for, for uh, malicious code or, or code that's going to run over 16 seconds. So at around 16 seconds, the Java judge will, uh, will give up and give me an error. So I click here to refresh. I can see that it's already given up. So this is my second attempt. This is attempt version number two. This is my second attempt to solve this problem. I didn't do a very good job. Um, and it says time to have run the file program. So um, rather than bring down the whole system with infinite loops, it, it, it gives it 16 seconds to, to do its work, and, and then it just tells the bug on that particular solution. So I'll go ahead and retry this. I'm going to try this one more time. So that's what I'm expecting. 
subscribe to the output of 81. So I'll let you compile. Save it. Fresh. Incorrect. Now I do have a rubric score though. This did compile, it didn't give me any compiling errors. Let's the details here. This is my third attempt. It took me 19 seconds. My rubric score is quite high and it's, uh, it's high because I, the program was compiled properly. It's showing zero output errors, but it's also showing test output errors of four. So it's not a perfect solution. It's by far a perfect solution. Um, I kind of cheated there and gave it what I was looking for as a sample output, but it's test output, which I'm not sure what its test output is on the system knows. It went ahead and said my solution is incorrect. So it's a pretty smart system. Um, it knows exactly what it's looking for, and it knows exactly what a perfect solution would be for a low low score solution. It's perfect, they got a perfect score for it. Morning the zero uh file error straight uh pages. This is the users. So this is for features. So administration you can the user, you can add in the user, um giving them this list of ninety more user accounts address just right there. With the uh, problems, I can create a new problem, I can modify the problem by not um this problem for example is hidden so it's not being shown, I can hide it. I can add a new problem, give the title, give it a category, or add a new category. Um, I can set up the test inputs, or the sample outputs, the sample inputs, and in the search to expect to see if those sample outputs are the outputs. So I can do the problem as well. For the user activity, this is a little bit more fun. This page, I can see how many attempts each user has submitted. I can see the logins. If I go ahead and click on a user, I can see more details for that user. Uh, the number of logins is six, the total attempts, uh, the number of problems they've attempted, uh, and then tries that they submitted. So there's one problem that they probably have any or they're still working on here. Uh, under the categories, there's four categories. I can see uh, this is an exclusive, mutually exclusive. So each problem will only appear there once. So this uh, particular user has Perfectly solve two repetition problems and one science problem and the event and one screen problem. At the very bottom, I can see all of the details of the user attempts. So I can see he had a perfect attempt here, and um, this one's a, a very perfect attempt, 6.0 on the Rubrics uh, score. I can go ahead and click on that, see the details, um, see what is submitted, or he or she submitted, and um, perfect Rubrics score. And he did that in one attempt, so that's why it's a perfect Google score. Going back, I can see another perfect one where he took three, tried three times. The last one took a minute, but in total, it took eight minutes and 49 seconds since he, since he got this problem. Going, moving forward to solutions. If I click the solutions here, I can see there's 146 total attempts in the entire uh, database, and I can see. I can sort them uh, by rubric score, uh, by user, by title. I can, I can look at, uh, at all the attempts in the entire system. The problem logs, um, again, mutually exclusive here. Each problem in these categories will appear once. So I can see that 100% of the repetition problem. So as you can see, this Java Online Judge uh, have a, um, you know, an environment for teachers to create the uh, Java programs and for students to try to test uh, uh, their knowledge of the programming. And everything uh, will be recorded so uh, teachers will know what kind of, what categories of question is more difficult than others. And also, uh, as what you can see that uh, you can see uh, if uh, students can do uh, perfectly in a kind of a question or a kind of uh, uh, category. And uh, also, you can see the abandoned one, so you know uh, what the students they try not to do. Uh, let me see. And every time they spend. Um, on that. Let me see. If, um, um, there is no rubric 
at the list page, uh, this demo, uh, and I don't have a rubric uh, uh, on my hand uh, either. So I will try to find the rubric and uh, then show you what the, the rubric list online judge used uh, in the in behind the scene. Now this one is done by by uh, my research team, but uh, there is many online judge because online judge just uh, as I said, online judge is always used for contest for programming contest. So you can find some open source uh, online judge. However, why why we develop our own? Because very easy. If you download any online judge and install, you will find that. Uh, very difficult to use because the, those online judge is for contest. So you need to create the members, team, and everything. And then you need to set up start time, end time, and everything else. And also that the online judge is sometimes uh, very good, cover the many different languages like Java, C++, PHP, anything. However, in that case, that is more difficult to use. So. So we want to have our own online judge because we only need the partial functions from online judge. And also we want to have a, a service which can help us to integrate into our mega world or other games. So that is why we create our own. And uh, since we create our own, then we can have our own Rubik. Because if you use online judge, uh, uh, open source online judge, they don't have a rubric. The only only thing they have is calculate your time and the error or run and then send back. They don't need to calculate how much score you can have for this program because that is contest either win or lose. So either work or then you will uh, your your program will be returned to you. So so that is why we don't use uh, open source online judge and we try to develop ourselves. Yeah, so sometimes you, you, will, you will need to face this kind of choice because um, applications available in the market or in the real world, sometimes they don't uh, have the function you want or they have too many functions that you want and it's very difficult for you to integrate into your uh, system or your plan. For example, if you want to teach programming language with those open source online judge, then you will find it very difficult to integrate it into your classroom because you need to make many efforts for using that. Second, you need to teach students how to log in, how to use that. But if you use this online judge, you just let, ask them log in and then take a program down. So that is the difference. So sometimes you need to have some kind of trade-off between either you need to self-development or you can use others' uh, uh, solution. OK, so that is uh, for the knowledge domain. Another thing very important is the platform. How about your system can be used in iOS system, in Mac, or other places? So, we have cross-platform system and we have Windows-only system and some system can be running uh, on the mobile devices. So for the cross-platform system, anything like a browser games, it can be used cross-platform as long as when you develop it very carefully, you will make it a cross-platform system. So try to use HTML5, which will make your program cross-platform. Second, even you use HTML5, you will use some kind of JavaScript. However, there are two engines in the real world. One is adopted by Microsoft. The other one is Microsoft, uh, adopted by all other platforms. So when you when you're trying to develop a system with JavaScript, you need to make sure that you use common library or at least the library can be handled by most of our browsers. As so far we know, most of you have your, bro your uh, operating system running more than one browser, right? So if you can find a, a, a common library which can be used, can be identified, can be dealt with, 
by all uh, browsers like uh, Internet Explorer, Microsoft Edge, Safari, uh, Chrome, Firefox. That's good. However, if you find uh, some functions which you have to use a specific library, then you need to choose the majority because everyone uh, whose computer is running Windows, they have uh, Internet Explorer and the Windows uh, and, the, and the Microsoft Edge. However, they usually will also install the Firefox or Chrome in their uh, system. On the other hand, uh, if they are using Mac, then they don't have, they only have a Safari. So in that case, if you use the library belongs to a majority of the browsers, then people still can use You only need to emphasize that please don't use Windows Edge or Internet Explorer for this system. Then they will find a way out. Okay, but the, try not to use a Flash, Adobe Flash, because that is not a cross-platform. At least it cannot be running uh, on both the Windows and the Mac OS and the Linux. So that will be more difficult for, um, for people to use. And uh, as you can see, Pecunia. Uh, Pecunia is running in Windows. However, because Pecunia has uh, different clients for different uh, platform, it has a Linux client. It has a client for iOS. In that case, you can still consider OpenSync um, whatever you develop with OpenSync is a kind of platform, cross-platform solution because uh, users can find client installer for their platform easily. Windows, however, when we use Kinect or you use Xbox, PS, then you probably will face the Windows only solution or other platform solu uh, only solution. Mobile device, you can choose iOS or Android or Java. So in the past, we choose J2ME because J2ME is a, a kind of cross-platform solutions for all mobile devices. And then it's turned out that we have Android um, mobile devices. So Android will be a much better choice than iOS. Why? Because first of all, when you want to create the iOS app, you need to pay. You need to subscribe uh, some kind of developers, not, a, not much money, like a, a hundred dollars something a year, but you need to pay. So you pay a hundred dollars and uh, you have a very slow progress and then you need to pay another hundred dollars to, for, for your developer license so you can develop an iOS app. And then one more challenge for you is, doesn't like Android platform uh, applications. If you develop an application for Android, you can have a, a file called something.apk and you can give the APK to anyone and ask them to install untrusted source app to their um, Android phone. However, iOS, you can't. You need to make sure that your application put it you know, onto the App Store so people can download and install. The problem is you probably need to spend three months or six months to get your app approved by Apple because they have some kind of quality control. They will need to see how good your your app is and how how the design user interface design is. If your user design is like what the Anurag did for the murder website, then probably you will not be publish your 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 app. That's is that's is really real case. Many app cannot be you know, putting on the um, uh, Apple Store because the user interface design is bad. Okay, so basically our research team, not, a, not just me, our bigger research team include Dr. King Shuker and others, uh, other uh, 8 to 12 professors. Three years ago, we decided to abandon iOS. So three years ago, we don't even consider iOS anymore. That is why, that is the reason. And uh, one more reason, because our university emphasizes open access. They think if you develop an uh, application for iOS, which means you require your users to purchase Apple's product. 
However, if you develop an application for Enjoy the Phone, then they can purchase the same songs uh, Enjoy the Phone, they can purchase HTC, they can purchase any you know, man, 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 manufacturer's uh, product as long as they support the Enjoy. So that is the, uh, another reason. Players, when you develop uh, an educational game or a virtual world, the first thing you need to think about is the player's number. How many players, how many users we are going to use your system at the same time online? Okay. First of all, if you are creating a mobile app, which is supposed to um, help many people get on, uh, get on the app and use the app, however, they cannot see each other. They cannot be aware of the, the presence of others. Then your mobile app is still a single user. Although, behind the scene, many users are in the same server and running something together. So single user game, so we have a single player game like the autistic children, they cannot play with others and uh, we, we try to make things simple. And uh, a bit of a uh, physical kinetic kin game is also single player. However, there is a kind of uh, match mode. So students, they can uh, compete, uh, compete with others in front of Kinect and the screen. So it's, it's a kind of a single player scan. However, you can also consider it as a, a kind of a multiplayer game in the real world because uh, when you play, I look and then my turn. Okay, so that is a multiplayer game. And uh, uh, we have also called a massively multiplayer game. Basically, multiplayer game usually uh, is talking about a game can handle four or the eight players played together. So, for example, a commercial game like a StarCraft, a World of uh, Warcraft, and uh, uh, League of uh, League of Legend. That's supposed to have ten people play the game at the same time, and others. But the massively multiplayer means when you play the game, there, there are more than dozens of uh, players online. So that is a mega world and other open thing like a second life virtual world can handle. Discipline. We just talk about domain dependent and domain independent. So in our research, our game support activity of daily life, money management, that is a financial concept, physics, math, science, museum learning, and uh, Java and ActionScript programming language, and the real world, which means they can do the field trip in the real world to visit some kind of temple or, or something um, famous or historical, uh, um, has historical meanings, and uh, or any, which means the game can be used for any kind of subjects. First of all, most of our game is browser-based game. And most of our educational game we developed are multiplayer game. Why? So why we trying to use that? First of all, as you can see, this is a PC game. That is Age of Empire. This one is StarCraft. So that is Microsoft Age of Empire, which allowed eight people play together. And of course, you can also play it alone with computer and the StarCraft you can also uh, play alone with computer or play with others against with others so that is a PC game this one is massive multiplayer again as you can see there are so many players here and they can do something in the real uh, virtual world so that is a massive multiplayer again and this is web basket so as you can see this is um, very famous uh, happy farm or something you needed to uh, you know plant something and then grow and then you will steal uh, from others others farm something like that. I don't like this kind of uh, 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 again because I don't like uh, games to teach you wrong concept which means stole steal something from others farm that isn't doesn't make sense. I can I can accept that you go to others farm and help them to you know watering or doing something, but still that is really not very good. 
And uh, also you can see this one is a very long time ago called Travian. A uh, Travian game is a very long time ago, very similar to a mega word. However, that is totally different because uh, you can see each of these tile means one player's village. So you will try to build your village. So when you get into this, you will see your, your village, your city looks like this. And uh, then what this world map is used for? This world map is used for attacking. So you, you will try to attack others' uh, village. So I, I also don't like this kind of idea. I really don't like to uh, have a, a, a game that, uh, um, you know, have this kind of behavior unless players who accept. I remember in the real world commercial game, like World of Warcraft, it's also allowed the people to have some kind of player versus player uh, battle. But they need to tell you, I want to deal with you, do you accept? And you can say yes or no. If you say yes, which means you want to deal with others, you want to fight with others, then no one can can, uh, can care about that. And, but uh, if you say no, then you can live in a peace world. So that is a very important thing. You should uh, give them choice. That is when we do game-based learning, why, why we say games can, uh, games, uh, can help, not help, sorry, attract students or players because their features, the characteristic of games, first of, the first thing is control. They can control everything. So um, Professor Sahana and uh, Shrida, they, they asked me a question about, so how did you differentiate uh, virtual world and game? Very easy. If you create a virtual world and you ask the students, get into the virtual world, and then you need to do network troubleshooting. They don't have any choice. They, 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 only, they only have one choice, that is, get online or get offline. But uh, in the World of Warcraft, uh, this kind of game, as I mentioned, that you can even go to fish for two hours, three hours. You can do nothing in the game. And then when you get into the game, you don't need to solve the quest. You can hang around and you can talk to people and doing some kind of business, which um, what you want to do. So you can control everything. That is a problem because if, we, if that control happens in the game, then you cannot guarantee students we are doing the learning quest. Just as I mentioned in APS, many APS, I, I say, when you say self-learning is better, then how much time they need for self-learning? Self-pass learning. So you cannot have a workshop and say in three hours, then you still give them the three hours and you say you need to finish this chapter and we will have a post test. That is not a self pass learning, although you think that is. But uh, some people, they will, they probably will need more time and some people, they don't like to, you know, sit in this room to read. Some people probably want to, you know, lie on the, the bed and read or even go to the toilet to read. So, Self-pass learning means you can learn on your own path, your own way, at any time you want. So, so it is very difficult to argue that uh, you have a workshop, fixed time, fixed place, and uh, saying, claiming that is self-pass learning. That is a very, very difficult uh, argument that you will be needed to explain very clear. Uh, for reviewers when you trying to do this. So, that's it. Yeah? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. When we talk about the pecunia, you will know why pecunia is a game. Okay. So, yeah? Yeah? Yeah?
uh, which one this one prop space you don't need to install but this one you need to install yes uh, because they are internet based game so so when you log in actually you sign on on the central server so basically most of this kind of massive massively player uh, online game they have a central server and uh, they have uh, more than one central server you know they have a lot of words so when you when you sign in you can say oh i want to create my account in secret village world and uh, secret village world means a uh, five servers working together for that world so when you say okay i want to create an account in secret village yes you can and then every time when you log in, the central server will uh, uh, authenticate your account, account username and password, and then redirect you to the the world server. So the world server is composed of at least five servers. One is about the the world material and the texture server. Another one is charging for uh, like uh, monsters, NPC. Another server is uh responsible for uh, animation and something like that. so in the world of warcraft as 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 far as i know in, back in 2006 one one word in world of warcraft is composed by five servers five standalone server independent long servers so so uh, so that is why you when you get online you can see others because when people other people get online they will also redirect to the same word so you cannot see other people who you know reside in another world you cannot see but you can see all people in in the same world like you yeah yes 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 yeah that's true that's true that is why some research if you go to survey do some survey you will find that many researchers they use like a um, let me see which one uh, they like to use never winter night never winter nights never winter nights is a, a single player game or you can say multiplayer game pc game but uh, its engine is open so you can create your own world by yourself they have a world map editor okay and also this game starcraft starcraft also have also has a um, world, world map editor and uh, also uh, i know a group of researchers they can control the uh, these characters inside the game uh, i don't know if they they have a contract with this company or not but uh, uh, they're trying to apply the neural network into each of these small guys so when you play the with a uh, computer three times four times five times you will find the computers is getting smart because they are learning so that's it is what i know one uh, there is one group uh, uh, of researchers they use this platform so basically you will see a couple of platform which because they have uh, map editors so you can edit your own map you can put your npc into the uh, the world however because eventually the engine is still closed so you can also only give it those npc fixed content so you can you can allow uh, the NPC to give a, a player's quest. However, the quest needed to be predefined, predesigned. So you cannot automatically uh, generate something for the NPC to talk to the user or interact with users. Yeah. No, no. The NPC will 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 interact with all users. They cannot learn because the oh no that is that is this one that is what I said because I don't know that group of researchers if they have a contract with the company yeah yeah not sure. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. 
it's a game because you can do anything you want. You can you don't need a, you don't need to take a quest. If you want, you can just get into get online and talk to people. You can sit in the in the school or or meeting room or anything. You can do whatever you want. You don't need to do you don't need to do learning quest. And also, if you want, if you have money, you can go to other worlds to do something else. So not not all worlds are educational best, right? Like APS, this uh, secret village. You cannot say they are learning. We can create a more fun um, exercise or quest. Of course, uh, Mega World has uh, two things miss. Two things miss. One is PVE. That is player versus environment, which means sometimes when you walk in the world, you probably will see monsters. Or something, so you can decide to, you know, free out, or you can decide to fight with the monster. If you fight with the monster and uh, you win, then you probably can get uh, some kind of uh, a word like uh, gold or something, and uh, then you can sell in the store. That is why some people, when they play this game, some people they choose to fish, it. some people to, they choose to manipulate. Uh, the market, actually I did, I also did, because in one period of time, I really pull, and uh, and I try to sell something, and then I thought, whoa, I can get so, many, so much money, and then, then in that month, the only thing when I signed in the, uh, sign, sign in the World of Warcraft, I created things and sell them on the market. So, so basically, when you play this game, I play this game for seven years. So, different stage, you will think to do different things. So, for example, in the latest uh, two years, I, I, I like to, you know, solve quest. But uh, at the very beginning, I like to, you know, play with others uh, as a team to, you know, conquer something. And, uh, and, uh, I, as I say, one month, I, I like to be, uh, you know, businessman trying to, I, the only thing I do is trying to create something to sell then, then in the market. So when you play this kind of game, you can do, do many things. So Mega World doesn't have a PVE feature, which means Mega World cannot uh, attract the people who want to fight with an environment. So which means Mega World has less choice than regular games. Also, regular games, they have a PvP, that is a player versus player, the feature. So, as I mentioned, I don't like that kind of, of things. However, some people they like. So, if Mega World wants to have, we're trying to have an arena. If you go to the arena in the Mega World, then you can fight with people. And you can fight with people in different ways. Sometimes you can fight with people directly, or sometimes you can fight with people with card, card game. So, so that is our idea. We want to have a PvP feature in the game. However, we want to make sure that PvP can only happen in arena, and there are more one than one choice that they can do in the arena. So two things are still missing in the Mega World. But uh, you can, you can of course create some kind of fun. Quest, not an educational purpose quest. So people they want to learn, they can they can take a, a educational quest. If they don't want to learn, they just want to play, they just just want to make money. Then you can have other quest. And uh, as we say that the quest, the items, the reward item, you can make it as a kind of link. So when you click a link, you can give them other reward in the real world. For example, if they click this link, they can get a, a kind of uh, a word point in Facebook or something. I don't know. So, so basically, make a word is a kind of a game because we don't want to restrict people only taking learning quest in the game. They can do whatever they want. And that is also we record everything. We record your activities and uh, we want to see what kind of people you are. So if you go, 
go online and the, the most of the things you do is chatting. We record that. And uh, probably you always trying to, you know, whisper Rito or something. Then we can know, oh, your social network relation, we can figure out some. So, so basically, make word is a platform that uh, not only for educational purpose, is also we want to collect the data for doing the big data analysis, including the uh, behavior analysis later. Yeah. So, why we choose browser desk again? Why we choose multiplayer again? First of all, multi, ma massive multiplayer again has all the features that most of the game has. So most of the game has this kind of features. But uh, multiplayer or massive multiplayer again has a social awareness feature, which means you can feel, you can know people they are playing the game with you at the same time, at the same place. And also multiplayer again and the massive player again can give you collaboration and the competition uh, sense. For example, you will see, oh, why, why Luxury has so many gold? How, how she made, make money like that? So I want to compete with her. I, I will say, okay, now she has 20 mega world dollars. I want to have 20, uh, I want to have a 3,000 and I want to become the first one. That is a competition. Collaboration, unfortunately, uh, Mega World doesn't have a competition at this moment. Uh, sorry, collaboration at this moment, which means can we have a quest that asks at least two or three people work together to finish the quest? For example, the quest has only limited time. You need to grab uh, Different things from different NPC, so I can I can have a I can become a, a team uh, with Anurag and uh, Kavya, and we say okay, let's pick up this quest. Okay, we pick up this quest. You go to there, I go to there, and you go to this, and we collect the things and come back together. So in that case, we collaborate, and then we finish. We can we can uh, complete that quest, but. Uh, of course, you need to uh, decide decide the the, mm -hmm. um, the quest more carefully because how this kind of quest can be, you know, combined with educational things, learning topics, or others. Social relationship. Many players when they play the game, they don't like to play again. At the end, that they the only motivation they have to continuously play this game is people. I don't want to play this game anymore. However, my friends, they are still play. So sometimes I'm still getting online and play. Or I don't want to play this game. However, I'm in a team or I'm in a group that's in, in the World of Warcraft we call guild. So many people guild, uh, they can, they can uh, build a guild we can have 200 people in the guild. So some people, they have a title like uh, they are guild master. Some, some people they don't have, they probably will be, you know, senior or junior or, or captain or major. So when you belong to a guild, you will say, ah, oh, I have so many friends in this guild. If I quit it again, then I won't be able to talk to them anymore. So at the end, you pay money just uh, to keep your social relationship with them, connect with them. And also dark side of a human being, just as I say, you like to kill others, you like to attack the others. You cannot do that in the real world, otherwise you will go to jail or even you have a very uh, heavy major penalty for that. But okay, you can do that in the in the virtual world. Rich story, that is a very important thing. Many of our research shows that uh, uh, players and students, they don't think your game is a game if the game has no story. And the results also show that if your game have a story, then they will have more motivation in playing that, in using that. And uh, of course, as I mentioned, and multiplayer again and massive multiplayer again, they always have a longer, you know, life cycle than others.
okay because in a single player game once you finish the 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 all levels then you you say i don't have anything else to do so you quit you just uh, put it again in the the box and you you never play it again but the money player games you can play them for many for very long why web best because installation free your user don't need to be a computer guy you know, your user don't need to know how to install a software when they get online they can see your your game platform independent because you are using browser so that is platform uh, independent user friendly that is a very important thing when you create a game for example something like this there are so many different user interface and uh, users may have no idea what the what does this function mean? So what this function can do? And uh, then in the massively multiplayer again, you have more than that. Actually, there are so many things. There are here is things, here is things, here, here, here. Every, everywhere is uh, function features. So when people, they play this kind of a game, the most important, uh, the most challenge they have is they will say, how to play. They always ask me how to play. They log in and they don't know what what the things they needed to do. So if you have a web based game, then the user interface is will be simpler. And also because uh, in the in the uh, web based application you have your links, you have buttons. That is very familiar for them because they are using web always. So that is uh, one thing. Low cost. Low cost means you. You can spend less time and less budget for developing a web-based game instead of a, a, a virtual world or a 3D or the, um, you know very rich content um, games. And also, it's, a, it's less difficulty to develop. What that means, I can hire a person who knows uh, who knows HTML5 and JavaScript and CSS. He or she can help me to develop my game. However, if I want to create a, you know, commercial game, I need to hire someone who who understands C plus plus, who understands the, uh, you know, game engine, or Unreal, or United 3D. Wow, you know, my target group is getting small, and which means I need to pay more to get the developers work on my my game, and also. Most of web-based games can play anytime, anywhere. As long as they have a data plan, they can use their mobile device to play. And as long as they have time, they can turn on their browser and then play. And uh, that is what I, I mentioned. You can play this game at anywhere. You don't need to sit in front of a computer. But the most things is uh, another user-friendly things because when you play this game, you can play any time you want. So even in the ET lab, you can play the game. And when you see Sahana is getting in, then control F6, something gone. Oh, see, I'm reading paper. That says, okay, that is what we call uh, your game can have uh, some kind of boss mode. Boss mode means uh, you can only one key to, you know, disappear your game. Many, many web best game has this function, boss mode function, really. I, I am not kidding. So another thing is because you create a web-based game, so you other web-based system can be you know integrated into your game. So why this is why web-based multiplayer or web-based massively multi, uh, multiplayer again. Now let's take a look at a trading card game. So what is a trading card game? Yeah. Yes. Uh, the reason I, I we I, I or we will choose multiplayer again is because a uh, social aspect, social relations. Um, one thing is, uh, as you can see, when you play the game alone, that will be boring, or you will get bored um, anyway. However, if others they play the the game with you and you can see them, then sometimes you will, yeah. Uh, 
I'm sorry. I, I'm not a so great a person. I, I, I mean, I didn't think about that uh, that kind of goal uh, yet. Uh, um, my goal is mainly for uh, attracting people to continuously pray again. So as long as they can pray again, then my my purpose, uh, my goal is reached. And then uh, what uh, we need to do is to have some experts like uh, you to help us to make sure that uh, this kind of things can make a ha learning her happen. Yeah. We we uh, basically we trying to measure engagement. However, uh, however, for the mega world or trading card game, what we are going to talk, uh, we also measure uh, the attempts and their performance in the game. So uh, not in the game, in the learning system. Not only in the game because trading card game is an independent game. So, so basically, we create a, another learning system for them. So we're trying to make sure that this game can attract them to use that learning system. So, so we we record how how many time they spend on that system and how many attempts they they tried in that system and also how their performance. So, yeah, yeah. So. Basically, it looks like that. And this is trading card game. See, actually, trading card game is a very famous uh, game in North Europe. You will see that uh, you have a table and you 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 have uh, something and you have your card, and uh, everyone will have cards and you will draw cards from the deck and then you will do something on yourself. And uh, I already see this kind of face. That like, what? So let me let me show you a trading card again. So the paper based trading card game looks like this. Everyone has your turn. The first phase is drawing phase. So you need to draw a card from the deck. And then you have your cards on your hand. And for the battle phase, you will need to bring some cards. So he put a uh, eagle and the brazen king, and then enhance the brazen king's attacking powers. So as you can see, see, this is a player. There is another player sit here. However, who is this guy? This guy, no, this guy is a uh, something like a. A recorder or judge because that is a paper based trading card game which means I say oh I want to increase I want to use this to increase my uh, my what the blessing uh, Kings attacking power by five but the paper will not show that happen so that guy will record this and that guy will say okay now this card has attacking power um, plus five so when you attack the others that guy will tell you if you can, if you lose or win something like this. Then he finishes his round, and then now his opponent. So his opponent there, and uh, he can do the same thing, and then we change that uh, into a computerized um, trading card game. So. Now you can see that in front of your computer, and you can choose uh, the different cards and the play. Okay, so that is a trading card game. Trading card games belongs to a kind of ball game. So basically, in the ball game, sometimes we will use dice. We will roll the dice and trying to see what happened. So. That is one thing, and also some board games are very knowledgeable because they are teaching the, for example, uh, World World War Two or other uh, uh, like a biology. So I know there is a board game uh, which you will play, which everyone will play a role in a spaceship, spaceship, 
and uh, in the spaceship uh, something will happen and we don't know what will happen and uh, that game also has a r audio so you need to play audio the audio will automatically jump uh, saying warning warning what happened and uh, then you you guys need to work together to solve that quest and some of you are biologist some of you are chemistry so both if you are chemistry, then you are, you are, all of your cards are about that kind of knowledge. So you guys need to work together to solve the quest that the radio give you, give to you. This kind of game has one problem. They take time. A traditional board game usually needed to, need you to spend at least six to eight hours to play that game. So you sit in front of the desk and then you need to spend five, six, ten hours. So usually students or players, they play the in the weekends. And uh, this kind of game also, our, our trading card game, uh, if a, a regular one will cost you at least 20 or 30 minutes to finish that. But you can change the the life life value in that case you again can be shorter to 15 minutes so if you want to see of course we have many links to tell you how how this happened and we want to tell you how to connect the tcg with learning so first of all before the course start you will need to create accounts for students so every student they will have their own trading card game account and when they have a account, they will receive a beginner's card set, which is 40, 40 cards. Actually, actually, we had, we, we had a hard copy manufactured and, uh, for demo purpose. That is very, look, looking very good. Um, but I, I left them in Canada. I didn't bring them with me. You know, I don't, I don't need to bring that. Um, but, uh, anyway. Students, they can play there with the beginner's deck immediately. Then, every time when you have a learning activity, for example, Anurag, what is this? And if Anurag says, good, good, I give you a five-star card. So, basically, you will give a student a word according to their performance. So, the cards from one star to five star. So, more star means more powerful, more star means more rare. Rail. So, which means if Anurag can perform very, very good uh, on Friday's presentation, then I can consider to give you a four star card. Okay, that is that is a word. So, in that case, when students are doing learning activity, they can get a, a card, and the teachers can give them card according to their performance. Of course, you know, paper based card costs money, so. Computer card, no, it just needed to say, oh, I want to give Anurag one card, and then he has, right? So depending on my mood, if my mood is good, then I give it a good card, otherwise I give it a bad card. So see, that is why, that is the reason why we develop this game, because many researchers, many researchers told us that if you can give a reward or a word for students, doing learning activities. They will be engaged. However, there are two kinds of uh, words. One is symbolic. Another one is physical. Symbolic means, okay, you are doing good. Somia, you do, you do very well. I give you one star. But uh, you will say, what, what this star means? Mm, I don't know. But, if I say, okay, Somia, you are very good uh, in answering this question. Let me give you this pen. Okay, this is real things. Probably you need, probably you don't. And then researchers, they found that if your reward is physical, but uh, meaningless for students, then it's still nothing. It is still useless. So some teachers, they started to give students, especially high school students and elementary school students, in-game items. And I know one teacher, one teacher, and uh, he gave he gave uh, his students in-game item of a uh, commercial game if uh, his student performed good. 
how those in-game items come from? Two ways. You need to purchase in the market because other players will sell some old stuff that they don't need with real money. Second, you can play that game and try to get the in-game item by yourself. And of course, this teacher, he tried the second way. He played that game and he, he got a lot of in-game items and give uh, his student. However, that is not good, right? First of all, you either pay or you either, either pay efforts on getting those items. That is not good because teachers' responsibility should be teach. So that is what we think. How about we create a trading card game and that is free and uh, you can give a uh, cards for your student as many as you want and of course if you think a five star car is not enough then we can create a six star car because that is our game we can do everything we want so that is our our idea so when students trying to play the game they will find that that uh, oh see my new card is so powerful and i win i win i win and then they, they will try to get more cards. Of course, their opponent will say, oh, why, why I lose if I, I have that card? Then they will try to learn harder too. So that is our purpose. And uh, remember, from my point of view, I don't encourage people against uh, with others. So trading card game has another feature. That is a collection feature. Which means if you don't want to play against with others, it's okay. You have your own card collection book and you can see, oh, I still miss, I still don't have at least five cards. How can I get this five card? Oh, if I got 95 marks for my midterm exam, then I can get this card. Then you, you will also try to work hard, right? So basically you can see this is a five star silver dragon card and, uh, and that is powerful because it's, a, it's a attacking power is 15, it's a defending power is 7, it's a has, it's his range attacking power, which means it can attack the, uh, other cards, uh, two rows ahead. Something like this. So, we trying to have this trading card game by ourselves. The feature include we support multiple language, which means you can fight with others who play this game with ch in Chinese or in English or in German. So basically, we can create a Hindi version very quickly too. So then you can play the game in Hindi. And also, uh, the trading card game was developed by ourselves, so we can create more cards if you want. Of course, we need to find more you know art designers for this because usually we work with uh art uh, students in our school and they develop uh, this kind of card for us for example you can see there is a name here so their name will always show the, on the card so we we did a pilot study the first pilot study is conducted in a summer camp in this summer camp five day summer camp every morning we teach them office Microsoft Office, Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Access. In the afternoon, we allow them to play games. So in the morning, when they play, when they are doing well, we will give them card. In the afternoon, they can choose to play game. They can choose playing Xbox game, PS3 game, and also uh, Wii, Wii, yeah. Activities do not result in learning. No, that is the that is the the only game we have that is pure for fun, and we trying to integrate this into any kind of uh, uh, teaching uh, strategy or learning strat uh, situation. So we we give them three or four choice, including the Wii, Xbox, PS, and also our game. And surprisingly, we found that no one played Xbox, no one played PS, no one played Wii. They all want to play the our game. That is a very special thing. Second, at the end, we hold, we held a, a kind of a championship. 
invite all students to pray and uh, and they can pray with each other and uh, until uh, one champion comes out and we found that uh, people who win more usually they perform better in the class and they they receive more cards from us the only the only exception is the champion the the holder of gold medal he performed very well and he received a lot of card however when he played this game he used only the beginners car set and he is still the champion and we interview him why 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 you use uh, the beginners uh, deck uh, instead of uh, the card you receive from the learning activity and he said uh, he just uh, want to you know prove that uh, play this game is not only for card but uh, use your 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 brand so so he tried to use only the beginners car set and uh, he, o he also got the, the first place over the game uh, the championship so uh, but uh, but uh, fortunately he also received a lot of uh, good cards in the learning activity so that the exception doesn't broke our uh, you know assumption then we have a very huge not a very huge five classes uh, semester uh, sorry five classes uh, English vocabulary learning course in uh, grade uh, six and uh, in this in this uh, uh, experiment uh, we have developed a learning system which teach students vocabulary and uh, we have a trading card game we have two systems so we divided divided um, five classes into two groups one group has two classes another group has three classes and uh, all of these five group, uh, five classes students, they will use this learning uh, system. However, experimental group students, they will also use trading card game. And how they use the trading card game? Whenever they use the learning system, the learning system at the end will have a quiz for them. And uh, for control group students, they only see their score. But for the experimental group of students, they will see the score plus a reward. So, that is what we say. Uh, learning system probably will not be very, you know, attractive for students. But how about if we have a reward system attached to the learning system? So, as you can see that uh, we have a pre-test and a post-test. So as you can see, the pretest, uh, most of students performed uh, very similar. The only exception is this this group of students, this class. We don't know why. Even we ask a teacher, teacher doesn't know why. Teacher didn't know why this group of students, their uh, their pretest performance are so high. That is 85.7. That is it's almost impossible happened uh, in a class, but uh, it's happened. And uh, the teacher is the same teacher. So the teacher is itself, she doesn't know why. But uh, anyway, as you can see that uh, most of the students' pretest is not good. At the post-test, as you can see that the experimental group of students, they have post-test around 50. But uh, control group of students actually doesn't have, uh, uh, you know, many, much improvement. And also for the con another control group, actually they dropped. So, two things. First thing is the experimental group of students, they really engage to use the learning system because we calculate, uh, we have their, uh, how many attempts they, they log in to the learning system, how many attempts they use the, the trading card game. And uh, we also know uh, how many uh, cards they receive. So we know that uh, they are attracted to use the learning system. And uh, now, why they are performing? Yeah. So you allow the students to read the test. Yes. Uh. No. Every time when they use the system, the test will be different. Yeah. So so not a, not a always the five questions. So so when they use the the uh 
vocabulary learning system every time they will learn different vocabulary and at the end of the learning session they will prompt uh, they will be prompted uh, five questions five vocabulary and uh, ask them to um, you know some kind of multiple choice questions yeah so every time they will see different uh, vocabularies so why the post test uh, uh, perform the better perhaps because in the most of uh, questions or vocabulary comes from the learning system and uh, because control group of students they don't have a motivation to use the learning system which means they can only learn those vocabulary in the class however for the experimental group of students because they want to fight with others they want to get the cards so they're trying to use the learning system more often okay so in that case because the learning system teach them vocabularies and the loss of vocabularies may be seen in the test in the post test that is probably why they perform better but that is um, obviously because when, when we use a learning system of course we want the learning system to, to teach them something useful and something might be asked in the final exam or something you don't want to have a learning system that teach them nothing related to the course right so so basically that is our result and uh, as you can see this is a game and uh, when you get into the game you have a chat room you have your user list you have a combat room and you have your own card and uh, then you can compete with others and you can see your own cards like this so there are many different cards you can collect and then you can play the game uh, with other I trying to screen get the screenshot for every step I play and then I needed to write a story that what I did in the game so okay anyway oh one more thing is the battle result as you can see winner is my guy oh, of course always winner is will be me okay all right the the reason is two there, there are two reasons for that one actually I have the best card you have ever you will ever have uh, because I'm the creator so of course <laughs> and uh, the second thing is uh, because in the demonstration always I you know manipulate two accounts by myself so I, I will always make a correct move for myself incorrect move for the other one so I always win but but that is the problem winner is me but uh, see 18 has a plus 5 beating also has a plus 5 why that is another very important idea that I have for this trading card game I don't want the students to have a, that kind of um, sense or that kind of concept of saying loose is loose I want them to try their best so if you try your best even you lose you get the same point like a winner so even you lose the game you get the same points like me because you try your best so I, I, I want to I want to make sure that my game is always positive so so basically we because this game are used for um, um, grade 6 or high school students we wanted to make sure that they have this kind of idea even I lose if I try I can get the same scores and uh, at the end uh, we, we have the rank list you you will see your points so even you lose many many times but every time you get a um, high score then you will be ranked high okay so basically if you want to play actually you can but uh, I don't know if you, you you cannot do it inside the campus you can do it outside the campus if you want you can go to the TCG that is very good at ORG and you can use guest account that is guest one or guest two and the password is guest or guest one or guest two I don't remember but anyway you can also register an account to play this game so when you register an account you will re automatically receive the, the cards so you can watch the videos and the video also um, shown the, on the, the, the website so you don't need to worry so when you get on this website you will see uh, one two three four five six five YouTube video and they will teach you how to play this game from the very beginning to create and manage your deck to create a combat with others to start a match so that is uh, 
that is the trading card game. And uh, uh, this game we has uh, we have some some uh, paper published, but uh, the one I told you uh, about the elementary school students uh, experiment we haven't published yet. So uh, basically, all uh, long uh, very uh, long time ago uh, publications. Okay, so Pecunia is open scene. Open scene virtual world, and why are we call that is a game? Because in this game you can do nothing. You can just sign in, and you can hang around. You don't need to do anything. You role play a high school student who just graduated from the high school, 18 years old. So your avatar will getting aged from time to time, about 29 days. So after 29 days, your avatar will become. A 60 years old, old person, old man or women. And uh, at that moment, our system, our game, we uh, try to assess if you have enough money to survive, which means you need to have at least uh, 200,000 Canadian dollars asset. Like uh, if you have a house or you have a car and you have cash in your bank, you need to have at least 200,000 Canadian dollars, otherwise you will not be able to live in Canada. You probably need to find another job. So, so that is this game's purpose. Of course, when you get into the game, you don't need to do anything. You can just uh, sit there and you will see your avatar is getting old and uh, having nothing and then hungry and then send it to hospital, something like this. Or you can try to buy a house and then do nothing. You don't want to pay, pay back the bank. You can, of course you can do that. But, uh, oh no, no, you cannot do that in the real world, but you can do that in the Pecunia. And then you will find that uh, your house is gone and uh, you are in jail, something like that. So, so see, this is again, you can do whatever you want. You can learn the money, you can have a mortgage from bank, you can, uh, you can, try to use your credit card as much as possible and every month you only pay a little. So basically this game is a kind of a life simulation and experience. We want the students to try themselves, try every kind of strategy. And uh, when you play this game, you, you will not see any knowledge in this game. But everything created in this game is followed the financial concept and the policies in Canada. See, you don't need to create a game which, you know, suddenly pop up a, a, a hint saying, oh, you need to think about this. Oh, what is the interest rate? No, that's boring and, uh, and you know, very interrupt uh, our player uh, experience. So they try to do things in there. And uh, sometimes, maybe 20 years later, in the game world, they will find, oh, I shouldn't borrow money from that bank, not this bank, because of the policy, right? In the real world, they cannot fix that because 20 years passed. But in the virtual world, when they have afterlife, they can fix that. So how they can have afterlife? After they are, they are avatar getting 65 years old, they will uh, finish the game. And if you want to have afterlife, you need to take a post-test. <laughs> See, very simple. So, so you can do that. So they take a they take a post test. Then they can create another avatar, start from scratch. Which means they they only have one thousand dollars in the in the in the pocket, and they don't have a bank account and anything. In this world, we have three banks, one university, many uh, like a McDonald, cafeteria, and the companies. So students need to consider: Should I go to college first? Or should I find a job first? Or should I find this kind of job? Or that kind of job? Oh, no, that kind of job I cannot do because it requires three years experience. So they are trying to learn what happened in the real world, but we don't tell them. They try an error. And uh, that is our purpose. And uh, that is this game. Okay. Okay, see you on Friday. <laughs>